effective effective rate of return which is also called as effective annual rate which is also called as effective annual yield so all these has got the same meaning uh, yield is more often used in fixed income products and effective annual effective rate of return this is more often used in effective rate of return uh, is more often used in banks but all has got the same meaning so i'll be explaining this to you and i will you know share one example like over here this is about mutual finance bond so you see here it says coupon they are paying 8.25 percentage per annum however you see here effective yield is different it says 8.5 percentage per annum so how is it happening that's what we will be seeing uh, in this video all right okay so let me give you first one simple example let's say imagine you are investing 100 now after one year if i ask you how much will you get if it is growing at the rate of 10 percentage so you are going to your bank and you are depositing 100 depositing 100 which is growing at the rate of 10 percentage so bank is offering interest rate 10 percentage so what will be the future value what will be the future value so this 100 you know is growing at the rate of 10 percentage so 1 plus so future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r to the power n so present value is 100 1 plus rate of interest is 10 percentage for one period it comes to 110 okay so here you will say 100 110 it comes to 110 now if i say this 10 percentage is compounded semi annually so i am changing the question so rate of interest 10 percentage rate of interest is equal to 10 percentage per annum compounded semi annually now how much will you get compounded semi annually so when i say compounded semi annually so here you will get interest and again you will get interest over here so in that case how much will you get so if that is the case how it will work out is so after semi annually means what now after six months because total one year out of the semi annually as in after six months so when i say after six months so that means this hundred in six months it will grow for five percentage okay reason being entire year it is growing ten percentage so in six months it will grow for five percentage so it will be five percentage that comes to hundred and five okay and then again from hundred and five it is growing at the rate of 5 percentage at the rate of 5 percentage so it will come to 110.25 110.25 that means effectively when it is compounding at the uh, at you know when it is compounding at semi annual rate um, so effectively when it is compounding semi annually it is growing from 100 to 110.25 so there is a difference between 100 and 110.25 initially when it was growing annually it was growing to 110 now when it is growing semi annually it is growing to 110.25 so that's what we will be seeing this year so if i have to do this through formula it will be same formula like this just few amendments i will be making so present value 100 you know into 1 plus 10 percentage okay so the bank will say 10 percentage however it is it is compounded semi annually compounded semi annually so because it is semi annually i will divide by 2 and it is getting compounded two times 1 2 2 times so to the power 2 so now it will grow to it will grow to 110.25 similarly if i say that you know it was growing at the rate of imagine you invested 100 and the interest rate is equal to 10 percentage per annum compounded quarterly compounded quarterly so compounded quarterly so in that case it will grow to 100 into 1 plus 10 percentage per annum and compounding rate so it is compounding quarterly so that means four times in a year to the power 4 because 4 times it will be compounded so in a year if i take 0 to let's say you know 12 months so after every 
three months it will be compounding okay so three six nine and then 12 months so that's why it is divided by four and then to the power four because four times it is getting compounded so in that case it will grow to it will grow to 110.38 right so this is this is compounding and this is how you are supposed to find out the future value using compounding method now suppose if the question is what is the rate of interest correct so that's what i told you rate of interest so how do i calculate so like over here as i told you effectively it has grown to 10.25 percentage annually it has grown to 10.25 percentage now how do i prove this uh, mathematically so how do i calculate this 10.25 percentage so 100 okay initially it was 110 then 100 became 110.25 okay so here only one compounding annual compounding here twice it got compounded and so it became 110.25 so how do i prove this mathematically that the rate of return effective rate of return is 10.25 percentage correct that means in a year it has grown from 100 plus 10.25 percentage it has grown uh, 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 at the rate of 10.25 percentage how do i prove this now so now for that the formula is because i want to find out only the effective rate of interest effective rate of interest so you consider present value as one so one into one plus the nominal rate of interest that the bank has told is 10 percentage this is what the bank has told initially 10 percentage so 10 percentage divided by it is compounding uh, twice so compounding twice so to the power two minus one so if you calculate this it will come to 10.25 percentage so this is what effective rate of return uh, for the uh, uh, for the nominal rate 10 percentage compounded semi-annually for that the effective rate of return effectively annually how much okay so that's that's what it is similarly uh, let's take one example practical example of this uh, Muthut finance bond i just took it from google now you see over here this tenure this bond is for 27 months coupon rate coupon is interest rate that they are paying is 8.25 percentage effective yield is um, 8.57 percentage how is it possible so if i want to find out the effective yield present value i'll keep as one so one plus sorry so one into one plus nominal rate is nominal rate is the stated rate of interest that they are quoting which is 8.25 percentage so 8.25 percentage divided by so what is the compounding it is monthly compounding so divided by 12 so so when i say monthly compounding so every month it is getting compounded 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 times okay so to the power 12 minus 1 so if i calculate all this it will come to 8.57 percentage which is mentioned over here similarly you know if i want to calculate for the second one 38 months quoted rate is 8.50 which is called nominal rate of interest and effective is 8.84 so if i have to prove this it will be 1 plus uh, quoted rate is nominal rate is 8.5 percentage divided by 12 this is monthly so i'm dividing by 12 to the power 12 minus 1 so when i calculate this it comes to 8 point okay 8.84 percentage so that means effectively effectively in a year okay your money is growing at the rate of 8.84 percentage okay effectively it is growing at the rate of 84 percentage so it is as good as saying your money you know 8.5 percentage compounded monthly that is equal to saying your money growing 8.8 percentage compounded annually 
both will give you the same result both are same so imagine if one bank is telling you that they will they will give you 8.5 percentage uh, compounded monthly you will get 8.84 only annually and if another bank is telling you 8.84 percentage compounded annually you will get 8.84 both are same both are same so like this you can compare you know the the different languages used by banks and you can find out uh, uh, effectively what is the rate of interest in a year how much your money will grow by that you can find out so this is uh, effective rate of interest or or uh, effective annual yield one and the same all right thank you thanks for your time